Well, hello. I had originally planned a different episode for tonight. I do need to finish up the Swedish sorcery series. But I decided at the last minute that I should record something about current events. Uh, I am uploading this on March 4th, 2023. And very recently, UFOs have been in the news a lot. There's been sightings of objects in the sky all over the place. The United States Air Force has shot a couple of these objects down, apparently. Uh, there's congressional meetings about it. And so far, we haven't got any straight answers about what's going on. Um, now, of course, it's possible that uh, if you're listening to this several days from now, or months or years from now, um, we will have answers for what those objects were, or maybe we've made contact with extraterrestrials, maybe we don't listen to podcasts anymore, and we have direct mind-to-mind -mind communication under extraterrestrial rule. I don't know, but right now, the situation is a mystery. But it's a mystery that's been going on for a very long time, and tonight I will be reading from a book about some very bizarre activity in the sky in England in the year 1716. I will be reading from the book, An Account of a Surprising Meteor Seen in the Air March the 6th, 1715-16 at Night by William Whiston. A couple notes here. Number one, if you were confused by the date I just read, I was too. I had no idea what was going on. It says 1715 slash 16. I was like, is he talking about two different sightings on two different years? What's going on here? But apparently, uh, around this time, they had relatively recently switched over to the Gregorian calendar. That switch had come a little over a hundred years before, but I guess they were still in the transitional stage and they were working out the kinks of this new system so they would sometimes write the date with two different years um where the first is the julian calendar and the second is the gregorian calendar so 1715 slash 16 that's what that's about um i had no idea i learned something there and about the author uh, William Whiston, he was a, uh, a theologian and a mathematician. Apparently, he was a friend of Isaac Newton, and he even was a substitute teacher for <laughs> Isaac Newton on some occasions. He taught some of Newton's classes. And I guess he was also the guy to go to if you saw unexplainable phenomena in the sky, because in this book, he has published... 13 letters that apparently people have sent directly to him describing what they saw on the night of what was it? March the 6th. I'm going to be reading all 13 letters. They describe some seemingly impossible moving lights and other very strange phenomena. The book also contains some scientific speculation as to what may have caused this, and uh, some historical accounts as well of similar events, but I'm just going to stick with the letters, and if you're interested in reading the rest of it, I will post a link to the book in the description. Um, that should be enough intro for now. Let's dive into these letters and hear what people were witnessing on that night. Extracts from letters relating to this meteor. Letter 1. Edinburgh, March the 6th, 17-15-16. I reckon by this post you will hear of very dreadful stories of apparitions in the air seen by all the people of this city. I believe it won't be disagreeable to you to hear the account I will give you on this head, and to own the truth. 
I've been so long employed in stargazing, etc., that I've scarce time to put up my letters soon enough for the post. It seems, all this evening, there has been a great disturbance in the firmament, but I got notice of it from my servants only at ten o'clock when I went out to view the phenomenon. Twas, I confess, a very surprising sight. The heavens were enlightened to a prodigious degree by starts, insomuch that though the moon is in its last quarter and affords no light, I assure you, I read several papers very distinctly by it. As to the appearance itself, I scarce know how to describe it to you. Though in nightgown and slippers I walked up to the castle hill to have a more distinct and open prospect, here I found young and old, rich and poor, in short, the whole body of people gathered together. The whole horizon, at some times, was quite covered with a bright light, such as your flying clouds in a fine moonshine night. This light flew about, backwards and forwards, in a strange manner, sometimes collecting itself into a body, and giving by that means a more extraordinary brightness at other times expanding itself and rushing through other parts of the light, which seemed to stand still with a velocity equal to lightning, and had the same effect upon the eye, baiting the color, which, as I said before, was of a vivid, bright nature. There happened to be scarce any wind stirring, which is more remarkable the strongest body of light, which sometimes formed itself into a rainbow, and almost as extended, other times into a straight line, and again into a wave, seemed to impend immediately over the city, almost due east and west. But the shifting of those forms were instantaneous. One appearance there was indeed which gave great astonishment. The sky grew very light on a sudden, and from the several parts of the heaven, the light collected itself into so many several points, which, with great haste, flew unanimously toward a center, which seemed directly over the town. When these pointed lights met, they formed a figure just like the star which our noblemen wear. This is the nearest image I can give you of it, or to a mariner's compass. The light at this meeting was prodigiously great, though not lasting. When the several points seemed just upon each other in the center, they appeared to clash with great fury, then retired seemingly half a dozen or ten yards, then flew on again, particularly the points from the east and west, which perfectly, as it were, fought and run into each other, which always gave the greater brightness. At this mixture, there appeared all the colors of the rainbow. And the good wives are making dreadful prognostications of what will follow this unusual sight. These appearances yet continue and have for some hours more or less. I suppose it to be nothing else but an extraordinary, though accidental, meeting of vapors and exhalations in the air which thus collected have produced this effect. Which, however, I am sure you'll hear very terrible descriptions of, and therefore I send you this account to possess you at once of the whole affair. Letter 2. Watford, Northamptonshire, March 8, 1715 6. Reverend Sir, On Tuesday last, about a quarter before seven in the evening, one of my servants came to me in a great fright and begged of me to come out immediately, for there were two armies fighting in the sky. I hastened to the door, which opens almost full north, and indeed everything was dreadful. The beginning I did not see, but at my first coming out, the appearance of the heavens from northeast, from whence it seemed to me to have first risen, by the constant supply that always came from thence, to full north and full east was in long streams, something resembling the pipes of an organ, but with a most glorious light appearing through the intervals. This light was continually in motion, sometimes everywhere, sometimes in particular places, and sometimes two different lights came with great seeming fury against each other, and having met together, 
each rolled gently back like two waves that have dashed themselves in their opposition. About seven o'clock, there arose a seeming fire and smoke in the northeast. So then we thought, what we had seen was the effect of a fire at some neighboring town. But in about two minutes' time, there was such a seeming fire and smoke that if the whole city of London had been all on fire, it would not have looked half as half so big. This extended itself to almost full west and to about southeast. But as it spread, the seeming fire lessened, and all on the south side was a most glorious starlight evening, and we could not perceive the least breath of air, but the fans pointed to the southeast. There were several times appearances through these streams that looked like the glory that is generally pictured about our savior. About 35 minutes after seven, these streams all met in a point directly over our heads. And so soon as they seemed to meet, they appeared in all sorts of colors and waved about like a streamer in a moderate wind and something of that shape only broader at the end and vastly large. During all this time, there was not the least noise in the air, but when that prodigious seeming fire arose, we had a most dreadful cry amongst my neighbors, all thinking to be consumed by it immediately, or that the last day was come. Having been so very ill so long, and not yet well, I went into my house a little before eight, but about nine they would force me out again, to see a glorious light in the northeast. It looked like about half an hour before sunrising in a very fine morning. I could perceive it make a plain shadow upon the wall, and my son and daughters read by its light. About ten I went to bed, and the light still continued. Four of my servants would sit up, some out of fear and some to make observations. At a quarter after twelve they called to me with the utmost earnestness to rise immediately which I did, and then saw prodigious large flakes of fire, gently tumbling or rolling, and in shape as they generally draw or paint rolling clouds, and of a color like burning brimstone. The light in the northeast still continued, and so, they told me next morning, it did the whole night. Though in the beginning of this relation I called it dreadful, and so in some sense it was, yet it was the most glorious, beautiful sight at some times that ever my eyes beheld, and such a sort of glory as I had not the least kind of notion of. And so all that saw it said, I doubt not, but you will hear several accounts of this wonderful appearance. However, I thought it might not be unacceptable to acquaint you with what was seen and observed by Reverend Sir your most faithful, humble servant. P.S. These things were seen by all the towns near us, and some fancy they saw a shower of blood, and about ten at night a very large half-moon in the northwest. But these I did not see, but several positively affirm it to me. All that saw the beginning affirm it to resemble two armies fighting. My indisposition hindered me from being out so much as others were. On the 29th of February, about a quarter before sunsetting, there appeared a trihelion. Each sun seemed about 200 yards distance. Mr. Smith, his curate, told me he saw them. Nota bene. Mr. Flamsteed has a letter from the north, giving him an account of two other such parhelia, seen there two or three days after these. Letter 3. Oxford, March the 7th. Dear Sir, I shall fill up this sheet of paper with an account of an appearance in the air last night which was very strange and surprising, and is a little difficult to describe. About half an hour after six, there appeared in the extremity of the hemisphere a pretty large cloud, like smoke intermixed with fire, out of which arose a great many oblong rays, or streams of light, playing upwards and darting themselves about the sky. These increased by degrees in number and magnitude, and arose in a continued circle at east, north, west, and a little at south. They all tended upwards. 
and as they passed along, interchangeably took one another's places, playing over and mixing with each other. Sometimes almost the whole sky was covered with them, and some of them were very glaring and fiery. In about a quarter of an hour's time, they all gathered in a center at the top of the hemisphere, forming a ring in the middle, and then diffusing themselves all around, pointed their rays obliquely downwards. This appearance was something like the usual pictures of the sun on our signposts, only the streams were larger and longer, reaching near to the bottom of the hemisphere, on which account I think it was rather like a hole broke by a stone in the middle of a looking glass, or upon the ice in a pond, when the cracks extend themselves all round, ray-like, to the extremities of the glass or pond. The meteor stood, glowing there a few minutes and then gradually disappeared, and by a little after seven o'clock the sky recovered its former face. Towards nine, the sky was again on fire much after the same manner, only I think there was not such a number of pointed rays as before, but several red gleams or thin clouds of fire one after another skimmed nimbly over the sky. And thus it continued by fits and starts till after eleven o'clock. Sometimes the heavens looked exceeding terrible, and once I observed the whole hemisphere to be one uninterrupted blaze of light. Then it looked as if a thousand rooms had been on fire in a continued circuit about us, within a few miles of us, and the face of the heavens was such as we may suppose it will be at the conflagration, when the elements are just set on fire. Neither Dr. K nor any of our naturalists can give an account of this phenomenon, nor have they ever read or heard of the like. They want very much to know how far off these things were seen, that so they may measure the height of it. They think it to have been above the clouds, because sometimes a dark cloud would intercept some of the pillars of fire. Already strange things are portended. I have met several who tell me they saw swords drawn and armies fighting in the air. But as I was out myself and saw almost the whole, you may depend upon it there was nothing of this nature. Any further than large rays of light are like broad swords, and the playing of the streams within one another, their advancing and intermingling, etc., may somewhat represent the mustering of soldiers. I have a little more to say, but if I stay longer, I shall lose the post. Yours, etc. Letter 4, March 7th, How Near Grantham I here give you an account of a strange appearance in the sky about seven o'clock the last night. There were several pointed streams of fire or light making a compass, the points all meeting in a center, and go where you would, the center always seemed directly over you, nay were in color like the flame of brimstone. My servants who first saw it were so frighted they came running into the house, and some company who were coming on horseback said it was like fire coming just upon him. It was indeed very astonishing when I saw it, but they said much more frightful at first. Letter 5. Hillington near Lynn. I give thee an account of an apparition which did appear here in the air on the sixth instant, between seven and eight in the evening. I was coming from Lynn, and when I was atop of the hill, I saw a range of thin whitish clouds in the north reaching from northwest to northeast, but more east, and above and below the black clouds appeared two or three very light places like that in shape which is said to be another sun, but of a pale white color which I took for a reflection from the evening daylight which was then very bright. But as I beheld, I saw the lights in a motion sometimes very large, as if the breadth of a thing was towards one, and presently the edge. They streamed up with many colors, the motion and colors very visible to the eye, and as I kept looking, I saw many places of the white clouds also streaming upwards with colors and reaching over my head, and when I came to the river at the town's end, it was so light I could see to read, I thought. After this, a very great appearance in the northeast and east, 
of many colored lights streamed upward, that that part of the heaven was covered and reached over my head and went forward to the southeast and the flamings and streamings of many colors and their changings and shakings were very amazing, for they at that time seemed in great hurry and haste, so that all parts of the sky were in motion. I never saw the like appearance before. The heavens remained very light till after ten, a larger light than is an hour before sunrising, or after sunset, or that which is seen in the north above the horizon in the night when the sun is in the beginning of cancer. Pray was any of this seen in London. If it was, I should be glad to hear what the astronomers and mathematicians say of it. It was more surprising to me than the eclipse of the sun in April last. The colors that were seen were a light pale, white, green, murray, and darkish, and such colors as are seen in rainbow when they are at their brightest. These, with their several colors and motions to the right and left, with their eagerness upward as the flames of a fierce fire, so did all these do their office, which was very strange to behold. I give thee this, that thou mayest consider what the meaning may be, knowing thou hast a mind to inquire into things both secret and manifest. I pray God bless us and keep us from all evil, which is the prayer of thy servant, etc. Letter 6 Friday, March 9th, 1715 Upton upon Severn, Worcestershire About 7 on Tuesday evening There appeared streaks of red, blue, green, etc. Not unlike those of a rainbow, but the colors not so strong nor so broad, but intermixed like colors of a prism. The streaks were of different lengths, and interspersed here and there from about 20 degrees above the northern horizon, and so from northwest to northeast, to about 90 degrees, for none appeared on the southern part of our hemisphere, but as it were determined in the zenith, continually moving and shifting place, darting and contracting, or rather changing their colors as they were differently enlightened, but I took a little notice of this, thinking it was produced by the same cause as is the rainbow, or from the sun's rays refracted, and so thought no more on it. But about an hour or hour and a half after, I heard the people were in a great consternation, and that it continued, upon which I went out and made the following observations. The sky was extremely serene and clear, the stars appearing very bright, not a cloud nor a breath of wind stirring, and as light as in a clear night when the moon is just above the horizon or like the twilight in June. I could plainly see the hour and minute hands and figures on a watch and the vane on the church steeple. Day seemed to be breaking in the northern horizon, from whence there often appeared, sometimes at north-northwest, and so along to northeast, but chiefly about north, a whitish streak which rose up from the horizon to about 15 or 20 degrees high, and in breadth to the eye at their first appearing, about a yard, but in six or eight minutes they would spread to 12 or 14 yards in breadth, and then as slowly die away and disappear, but were soon succeeded by others in the same place or some other, sometimes eastward and sometimes westward. This I observed four or five times, and near, as I remember, when they appeared to be at their greatest magnitude, which was when they were about square, then we saw the greatest motions of disorder over our heads, which appeared like very violent, quick, and sudden agitations of small whitish clouds that seemed to dart and shoot over and across and oppose each other, and shoot along in streaks and sudden drifts, like as I often saw the snow this winter, when driven from a heap where it had lodged over a field, and appearing only here and there in its passage, and did not entirely cover the ground. So in this the blue sky appeared, and the stars all the time as bright as ever, only somewhat fainter in those places where the vapors seemed to pass, which was over all parts at several times, but never over the whole altogether. By the whole, I mean only that part of the northern side of the hemisphere, 
from about 45 degrees to 90 degrees and between east and west, for nothing appeared southward but stars, and but now and then that anything appeared between 20 degrees and 45 degrees north. Sometimes they seemed to crowd together and cling about each other, twisting and twirling in circular manner, like dust or snow, when in the eddy of the wind, or like water in a gully hole, and so disappearing without any darkness or cloud appearing in its room. But this kind of eddying I did not observe above two or three times, which always seemed to be just over our heads. Nor did any of their appearances of any shape whatever, for some said they were like armies fighting, others like firing of guns, and a thousand others, continue visible above a second or two, or thereabouts, and often not so long, but rather seemed only to be made visible by fresh supplies of sudden flashes of light, constantly succeeding each other, like light striking upon objects placed in the dark, but often intercepted. T'was sometimes for a minute or two all serene and clear, and then again those whitish clouds appeared, chasing and succeeding each other, like circles made and spreading in the water by the throwing in a stone, but with more quick and violent motions, and appearing and disappearing in a twink. Which makes me imagine t'was light, but from what cause I know not, striking upon the atmosphere and making it visible, for light striking or falling obliquely on the uneven surface of any body will produce every moment different appearances, as either of them are moved, and none but the rising parts enlightened, as the position is altered. But these things I only offer as my humble opinion to your better judgment, that you might easier guess at what I would more plainly describe if I could. For I think no body can be moved by any natural cause so swift as these clouds were. I know not what to call them else. I fear I have tired you already, so shall conclude with begging pardon for the length and uncorrectness of this, which I would have polished had I had time, but the impatience of my townsmen won't permit me. Some of them say it lasted till one or two, and some say that it was much more terrible at Worcester, and lasted till four. Worcester lies from this place about northwest seven miles. I hear it was also seen at Gloucester, the contrary way, almost, from hence 13 miles, but don't hear of its being seen southward. If you excuse the freedom of this, and vouchsafe to send me an answer, you will infinitely oblige me, in expectation of which I remain worthy sir, your very humble servant. Letter 7 An exact account of this meteor from Salisbury. Tuesday the 6th of March, 1715, in the close of Serum, the morning from 6 to 8 was very calm, and the air near the earth clear, so that I could see houses and other things at a good distance. But a thin mist hung about 100 foot from the ground, that obscured the sight of the steeple, though I looked at it, being about 200 yards from it. Which mist about eight o'clock was broken by the sun, and all the day after proved very fair and warm, with very little wind at west by north. In the evening at seven o'clock, the horizon was wholly clear, and the air calm, only in the north a strip of a black cloud lay about ten degrees above the horizon, on which appeared an extraordinary bright cloud in form of a broken column about six degrees above the said cloud, which seemed to rest on it. This soon disappeared, and another cloud of like magnitude presently arose to the west of it, as bright as the first, which I took great notice of, as having scarce ever observed such a phenomenon. But I thought that the second cloud, by obstructing the light from falling on the first, and by receiving it on itself, might be the cause of this appearance. This was succeeded by a third and fourth cloud, one vanishing and another arising near it with equal brightness. I soon returned from my garden into my house, not in any wise surprised, yet thinking on the variety of such a sight. In a quarter of an hour after, I went into the city, 
and as soon as I was got halfway of the close, I met with several who had not taken notice of what I had observed, but told me of vast streams of light in forms of pyramids, like lightning, like a rainbow, like fire, like the sky opening, quivering, and indeed like anything they could think of, had arisen from the north and west and towards the east as far as the zenith. Going on, I found High Street full of people, all talking of what had appeared, and what they all thought it might be compared to. By this time, daylight ought to have been over, but a great light continued near the horizon in the north, from northeast to northwest, which increasing at half an hour past seven o'clock, I concluded and said that I thought it would produce another of those fluxes of light which they had seen, which soon broke forth like a stream of fire, and quickly rose up by the chair of Calliope, on the west side of the pole star, almost to the zenith, and continued visible at least a minute. Its motion was very swift, and sometimes the forepart, moving faster than what succeeded it, seemed to break off, but soon was reached again, and united by what followed. Its form was a pyramid, whose point was in the zenith, and based on the body of the aforesaid light. Soon after, this disappeared, and more in the like form arose, but none that I could observe were near so large as this which I have described. Between eight and nine o'clock, many, at least twenty, meteors appeared in all parts of the sky, some larger, some lesser, white like the tails of comets, one after another. By their whiteness the sky looked gloomy and very dreadful. The north part of the horizon continued very light 20 degrees high from northwest to northeast, so that at 10 o'clock you might, and we did, read by it in a good character. At the same time, besides several emanations of light that issued from this northern light, a kind of flame or bright smoke arose from it, and as swift as the shooting of a star or meteor ascended to and beyond the vertex, and terminated at Cor Leonis, or near it, as did several times the like vapor from both east and west, and sometimes also from the south. But this last did not arise nigh the horizon, but from parts much nearer the zenith. The celerity of this vapor seemed very strange, and made me think it very nigh the earth, and that it could not be visible at any great distance from this place, but that time must discover. This light in the north, and vapors ascending from it, and also emanations of rays continued till one in the morning, when I went to bed. Nota bene. Notwithstanding the vast celerity of the vapor, it caused no alteration in the air, which still continued calm and serene, the fanes pointing that the wind was at west, and even through the light cloud in the north the stars were visible. Thus far I saw, and am informed by those that sate up longer, that soon after two o'clock in the morning the moon arose, and all the aforesaid phenomena disappeared. Soon after twelve at night the upper part of the bright cloud in the north grew more bright, and the under part black, and instead of the breaking out of the pyramids at several places, as aforesaid, there was, as it were, flakes or rolls of fire breaking off from the bright verge of the whole length of the cloud from northwest to northeast, which were carried up as the vapor or smoke had ascended. Between eleven and twelve o'clock, the several streams of light seemed to form themselves into a sort of canopy or umbrella in the zenith, continuing there with a motion and quivering in its parts for a little time, and then disappearing. Letter 8. Wakefield, March the 7th, 17, 15, 16. Sir, the following appearance is to me so very surprising, that I hope the freedom I take in the way of communicating this account will need no other apology. It's probable you may have seen it in London, or the like to it, but since I am uncertain of that, I shall be particular in some circumstances, which perhaps may not be very material, and yet by comparing observations, may determine whether the same individual thing was seen at two very distant places. Yesternight, 
I coming home from a friend's house in this town about seven of the clock in the evening was astonished with an unusual crepuscular brightness in the east, whither my face was directed, and the more because I knew the moon was not near its rising. In less than a minute I observed this to increase sensibly and to a prodigious degree, in a manner as manifestly as a blush in a man's face, but not quite so suddenly, which alarmed me a little, and put me upon several guesses as at the occasion. It may be some advantage to the description to tell you I imagined it the light of some quick fire in the neighborhood, as of straw or such materials. When I had walked about a stone's throw in this amusement, I remarked some obscure streaks in the brightness, like the streams of falling rain seen at a distance, but immediately my wandering eye being directed very intently towards heaven, discerned a phenomenon which my little philosophy cannot account for. About twenty degrees from the zenith, on the north-northeast, this estimate being taken from the position of the church against which I was passing, appeared a circle of more glorious light, whose diameter I judged to be about fifteen degrees of the prime vertical. The extremities on all sides were more obscure gradually than nearer the center, but in the middle, extending about three times the diameter of the sun, was an obscurity like that of a thick cloud, rolling with a remarkable commotion as if disturbed with the wind, not much different from the fuming of a gross smoke from a furnace, and showing different forms in which I sometimes fancied I saw something like a moon through a mist very red. The light circle was almost as bright as the blaze of lightning, and cast a splendor like that of the moon at her quadratures, which made objects very visible, which otherwise could not then have appeared. This whole circle was variegated with fine threads or streaks of shade, like radii, regularly and at equal distance, drawn from the circumference towards the center, which gave it the perfect resemblance of that figure by which painters and printers express not the body but the luster of the sun. This whole system of light sometimes stayed in one place for a few moments, then again moved sometimes directly, sometimes circularly, but irregularly as a feather tossed in the air. The continuance of this spectacle might be, as nearly as I can judge, somewhat more than a minute, after which it vanished towards the south about thirty degrees from the zenith. The church clock struck seven during the prodigy, which at eight I found to be nine minutes slower than the sun by a movement which I kept regular. The heavens were aspersed with some few clouds, but when the meteor came near them it seemed to attract violently and suddenly their vapors, which formed the shady streaks, and in shape but not color imitated the verge, which through broken clouds seemed to center in the sun. After this scene was over, the same monstrous twilight which was its prelude continued increasing and decreasing at unequal intervals of time, of which some might be a minute or two, others six or seven, as also in different quarters, but chiefly north-northeast, till about half an hour past eight it spread and kindled into an untimely morning over the whole hemisphere to the degree of twilight, when the sun is twelve degrees below the horizon. This continued till about ten, without much abatement, from that it languished till eleven, and was very visible at twelve, but then I attended it no longer. The chief part of this show was short, but its impression on my awakened imagination so lasting and legible, that though the estimates here are given by conjecture, yet I can confidently say and assure you they are very near truth. It was seen by multitudes in this town, and I should be glad of authentic intelligence from other parts whether the like was seen at any considerable distance, the rather because I am persuaded that the general twilight which I observed so long proceeded from one or two more of such phenomena, which was too far for me to discern. If by this faithful account I may procure the opinion of the curious on a subject which is above my ability to solve, 
it will be a great satisfaction to, sir, your humble servant. Letter 9. Lewis, Suffolk, March 1715-16. All the account I am able to give you of the Tuesday night's phenomenon is as follows. I was upon Glindhill riding home, and observed a large cloud of an unusual color that hung over my head at shutting in of daylight. It appeared yellowish and of a brighter color than I could expect at that time in the evening. The stars everywhere clear besides, insomuch that I do not remember I could see one cloud towards the sea, which was within sight, the wind being at northwest. All of a sudden it burst and dispersed rays of light that went different ways, but those that were sent to the northeast only were returned, which made several strokes on the remainder of the cloud that hung southwest, and by their collision produced a considerable light. I am well assured there was no light northeast till it was produced by the frequent strokes of the striae that were sent with incredible swiftness from the cloud when it first broke on each other, which seemed also to be beaten back as if they had met with a resistance in the same manner as you have seen water to be thrown off from a red-hot iron. I am your most obedient humble servant. A note to Bene. We had a smell of sulfur in the air. Letter 10. Elfton, near Newark, March 7th. I cannot but impart to you a most strange phenomenon which happened yesterday, being Tuesday the 6th instant, a little past 7 in the evening. Coming home to my house from Newark, I observed in the northwest a long and broad stream of light issuing out of a darkish cloud betwixt 20 and 25 degrees of the horizon northeast, as near as I can guess, like to the beams of the sun setting in a drizzling evening, the stream pointing directly towards the zenith. I was somewhat amazed at it, considering the sun had been then more than an hour set, and the moon's rising not being till the morning. Presently after, some other streams issued out of another cloud near to the former, with a very unusual light, and with variety of colors, black, blue, flame color, yellow, etc., and so more and more, till all that part of the heavens was overspread. During this whole time, never were such contentions, as it were, as betwixt these meteors, being all in confusion and darting one against another with an incredible force and swiftness for about an hour and a half. Through all that region of the air where this confusion and strife, for I can term it nothing else, was, the stars appeared clear as through a thin bright smoke, or as the sun sometimes through a thin bright cloud. The other part of the heaven toward the northeast and southeast was very clear, the stars bright and twinkling, as in a winter's cold night when there is no moon. About nine at night, these meteors, if I may so call them, in a great measure disappeared, but not quite. Some faint sort of contentions, as it were, were still perceived, and about ten of the clock they broke out again with a fresh violence in the same manner as before, and so continued till about half an hour past eleven. About twelve, a bright, globular body appeared, as big as and like the sun at his rising, but not quite so clear. Indeed, it was the most astonishing sight I ever yet beheld. During this time, the light was such that I myself, though almost sixty years of age, and another clergyman, did read several titles of the books in the Bible without any use of art. The night was calm, not so much as a breath of wind was perceived. It began, according to my opinion, in the northwest, and so drew round to the southeast. It was observed by a thousand people, not without the greatest wonder, and with strange apprehensions, some looking for the day of judgment, others as the presages of future events and calamities, etc. Letter 11, Huntington, March 6th. 17, 15, 16. This evening, betwixt seven and eight o'clock, 
we were called out to join with great numbers of people in admiring the unusual appearance of the sky, which was such that though I cannot possibly find words to give you a perfect description of it, yet it was to me extremely surprising. Doubt not, but different accounts will be given of it from this place, and to be certain, the frightful circumstances of it will be multiplied with the addition of political remarks as people stand affected. I think almost the whole hemisphere was covered with a thin bright cloud, but darting from the point directly over our heads as the center, in sharp rays towards every part of the horizon, and sheets of it moving very quick in opposite motions, meeting each other sideways, varying its color frequently, sometimes giving us the appearance of fire, and other times like flashes of lightning, the whole in a prodigious confusion and hurry, which lasted above a quarter of an hour, after which the skies were as before. This happened very clear, and many stars appeared. Since my concluding this, the disorder in the skies has begun again, in a different manner from what it was before. For from the horizon, but particularly from the northwest rays of light, or a thin bright cloud or vapor, I do not know which to call it, darts itself in the heavens with a prodigious swiftness, and with a continued torrent, as it were. But the stars seem to be vastly higher than it, and a great light appears in the northwest. Letter 12. Watford, Northamptonshire, Easter Day, 1716. I went to bed last night, a little before ten, and then it was a very clear, still, starlight night. About five minutes after ten, I was called up to see such appearances in the sky as we had so lately seen. At my coming to my window, I saw a very great light from the northeast to the northwest, and a thick black cloud, all that space almost level, and the top of it was about the height of a small hill, at a quarter of a mile distance. From behind that cloud this light came, and it seemed to us that if that cloud had not been there, we should have seen more amazing things than before, for what we saw was only the tail of what those that were more north must needs see. Above this cloud, all the whole space, appeared a multitude of different sizes of pyramidical streams, some seeming not above ten yards above it, and some about halfway to the zenith, but all seemed to be the ends of prodigious large ones, which were hid from our sight by this cloud. These streams moved gently from the northeast, where they first appeared, till they came to the northwest, and then leisurely dispersed. Then there arose a kind of reddish mist which passed all along the top of this cloud, and by the thicker and thinner parts of this mist properly disposed for that purpose, I suppose, betwixt us and that great light, appeared like an army marching upon a hill. Then all was clear for about four minutes, and then in the same place arose a more dark cloud, which passed, as I should have told you, the seeming army did, to the northwest, and appeared perfectly along the top of this black cloud, like different sorts of ships falling upon the sea. But we were so intent upon new appearances from the northeast that I can give you no account what became of the seeming army and ships. We had several sudden explosions, like the faint resemblance of a rocket, but those things that heretofore would have astonished us were now so common or so little in comparison of the great that we scarce regarded them. These things continued till about half an hour after eleven, when the moon rose, and I went to bed, having much disordered myself. But the appearance and light continued long after, as they told me. Pardon my freedom, dear sir, and believe me when I tell you I am sincerely your faithful friend and servant. Letter 13. Richmond in Surrey, April the 2nd, 1760. About nine in the evening, I observed a very large luminous arch in the sky, reaching from the east part of the horizon to the west, and passing at the distance of about 25 degrees from the zenith towards the south. 
its breadth was about ten degrees, and its light was everywhere uniform, pale, and faint, and the stars might easily be seen through it. Its limits were parallel and very well defined. It continued from the time I saw it about half a quarter of an hour, and then vanished by degrees. Afterwards I went to a more open place, and about ten o'clock I saw towards the north, near the horizon, another light like the daybreak, seemingly circular, extending half a quadrant on each side the north. The middle was more luminous than the outside, toward which the light gradually grew fainter. I also observed to the west of the pole star six or seven little branches or luminous clouds very faint and short, consisting of parallel lines perpendicular to the horizon and about the same height as the pole star. By height, I mean the same number of degrees of a small concentrical circle, which faded by degrees and disappeared. And this writer has included a Latin quote here. Uh, De caelo tibi finia dabit noctisque per umbrum cerinus flammarum longus albusquer tractus. Virgil. Uh, and I translated it. It means he will give you signs of heaven and signs through the shadow, the long streaks of flames turn white. Nota bene. That we are assured by a letter to the Reverend Dr. Pound, shown to the Royal Society and coming from an authentic hand, that at Calm in Wiltshire, March the 3rd, several uncommon rainbows appeared as also a parhelion at the same time. I suppose it will be published in the philosophical transactions to which I refer the reader. Nota bene. That I say nothing here of some other prodigies or uncommon things which we have of late been alarmed with, such as the swimming of stones against the stream in Ireland, the numerous balls of fire sent up in the north, the showers of blood with thunderbolts at Genoa, etc. Because I am not satisfied of the truth, or at least not well enough informed of the circumstances of such things, and therefore can say nothing authentically about them, either to my own or the reader's satisfaction. So, that was the end of the eyewitness reports, at least the ones that were collected in this book. You sure wish people had cameras. <laughs> All they could do was run outside and uh, write down everything they had just seen in a huge hurry and <laughs> try to get the details right. Uh, I noticed a number of people said that they were writing as fast as they could so they could get these to the mail in time. Um, they wanted to say more, but they had to put their thoughts together quickly. And I'd say a lot of them did a pretty good job uh, with the details here. I suppose he selected the, you know, the most detailed and careful accounts for this book. But we'll never know exactly what these people were seeing. We can try to picture it. We can sketch it out, but all we can ever know for sure is that there were very strange things happening in the sky that night. And there continue to be strange things happening in the sky. It's an ongoing phenomenon, and it has not let up since 17, 15, 16. A lot to think about tonight. I will leave the link to the full book in the description. I hope it was enjoyable. And until next time, have a good night.